This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 156, The Best Exercises for Your Body's Seven Trouble Spots, part one, by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. And I'm your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey, it's another Monday. Welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. If you're new here, this is the podcast where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs out there. For those of you in the US, a very happy President's Day. Most of us have the day off. I do have the day off today, but I'm here so that I can give you all some wonderful information from Ben Greenfield. So there've been a lot of requests for me to keep doing those inspiring quotes. So I thought, well, today's President's Day. Why not have an inspirational quote from one of our former presidents? And I quote, physical fitness is not only one of the most important keys to a healthy body, It is the basis of dynamic and creative intellectual activity. John F. Kennedy. Since today's author is a well-known fellow podcaster and fitness expert, Ben Greenfield, how perfect was that quote about exercise since we're gonna be talking about exercises for your body's seven trouble spots. Now, before we get into it, really quickly, every month on the first of every month, we give away a book to a random person on our mailing list. We're getting close to the beginning of the month again, believe it or not, So if you want a chance to win, plus get some helpful spreadsheets to optimize your life, come join. It's totally free. You can enter your email address at oldpodcast.com or text the word of my favorite superhero, Batman, to the number 44222. All right, with that, let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. The best exercises for your body's seven trouble spots, part one by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. A while back, I wrote a two-part series telling you how to effectively target seven trouble spots. It was such a popular series, I decided to combine them into a single article here on my website. Trouble spots are areas in your body that don't look the way you want them to. These can be body parts that are simply too fat or skinny, not curvaceous or toned enough, or simply too weak and prone to injury the type of troublesome issues that really bug you about your body. Have you ever wished you could just walk into a gym and get a customized list of the very best exercises to target your specific trouble spots? Consider this episode your go-to guide for the best butt, hip, and thigh exercises, the best calf exercises, the best chest exercises, the best shoulder exercises, the best back exercises, the best arm exercises, and the best ab exercises. How to find out how much a muscle contracts. Sports and exercise scientists utilize many different tools and methods to help them determine how much a muscle contracts during a specific movement, how many calories a specific movement burns, or how much stress is placed on a joint during a movement. One of the most popular and effective tools used to measure muscle utilization is electromyography, also known as EMG. EMG simply measures the electrical activity produced by muscles, and is performed using a special instrument called an electromyograph. The electromyograph creates a record called an electromyogram, which scientists then use to quantify the strength or quality of a muscle contraction. EMG signals can also be used to analyze medical abnormalities, the activation level of different areas of a muscle, the order in which muscles are recruited, and biomechanical abnormalities from injuries or poor movement patterns. So what can EMG tell us about the best exercises for seven popular trouble spots? Many studies have used EMG to study the extent to which certain exercises activate certain body parts. So if we know which exercises cause maximum activation of a specific body part, we can use those exercises to create the best workout plan for that specific body part or trouble spot. Without further ado, I'm gonna list some trouble spots and the best exercises for each. Butt, hip, and thighs. There are two different exercises that cause your glutes to grunt the hardest. One, prone bent leg hip extension against manual resistance. Yep, that's a mouthful. Basically, the move involves getting into a crawl position with hands and feet on the ground and then kicking out behind you with one leg. Now, when you kick out behind you with that leg, be sure it's against a partner who is manually resisting your kicking force. Of course, you could also do this exercise against resistance, such as an elastic band, but that's not quite as effective as having a partner resist your kicking force. Two, standing butt squeezes with a wide stance and feet turned out. 
This one is a bit hard to describe, but I'm gonna give you the description from one of my favorite butt experts, Brett Contreras, who says, quote, from a standing position, take a moderate to wide stance and flare the feet out slightly. Now, squeeze the glutes as hard as possible for 30 seconds. Make fists to increase the neural drive through irradiation. Just do this one time, end quote. In addition to your butt, it's important to target your hips and thighs. It turns out the two very best exercises for activating your hips and thighs are the deadlift, in which you simply lift a heavy weight from the ground, and the glute ham raise, which is a special apparatus at the gym that is also known as the low back extension. For the deadlift, which I also list as one of my two favorite exercises for getting a flat stomach, the basics are simple. You just pick a weight, such as a barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell, or any other heavy object off the ground while using good form that relies on your hips and legs, not your lower back. For the glute ham raise or low back extension, begin by adjusting the equipment to fit your body. With your feet against the foot plate in between the rollers as you lie face down, your knees should be just behind the pad. Keep your back arched as you begin the movement by flexing the knees and driving your toes into the foot plate as you do so. Keep your upper body straight and continue until your body is upright. Then return to the starting position, keeping your descent under control. Calves. Now that you know how to target your butt, hips, and thighs, there's one other section of your legs to worry about, your calves. Believe it or not, working your calves is not rocket science. The most effective exercise for your calves is the standing calf raise, which simply involves rising up onto your tippy toes while you're in a standing position. The beauty of this exercise is you can do it anywhere, while taking a shower, brushing your teeth, waiting in line at the grocery store, or even while doing other exercises at the gym, such as doing a standing calf raise while you press dumbbells overhead. For even more activation, you can stretch your calves prior to going up onto your tiptoes. To do this, stand on the edge of a stair, box, or other platform and dip your heels as low as possible before contracting your calf muscles and rising up onto your toes. Go back slowly to the starting position as you breathe in by lowering your heels as you bend the ankles until the calves are stretched. You can also make this exercise more difficult by adding weight which is often done by using a weighted standing calf raise machine at a gym. Chest. The best exercises for your chest, affectionately called by fitness geeks the pecs, are the dumbbell bench press and weighted dips. For the dumbbell bench press, you lie down on a flat bench with a dumbbell in each hand with your arms flexed at 90 degrees. Then, as you breathe out, use your chest muscles to push the dumbbells up as you extend your arms. Get close to locking your arms at the top of the lift and squeeze your chest. Hold for a second and then begin coming down slowly. Ideally, lowering the weight should take about twice as long as raising it. For weighted dips, place a bench or chair behind your back and another bench or chair in front of you. With the benches or chairs perpendicular to your body, hold on to one bench on its edge with your arms fully extended, your hands close to your body and separated at shoulder width. Meanwhile, your legs should be extended forward on top of the other bench. Your legs should be parallel to the floor while your torso is perpendicular to the floor. Then, put a dumbbell or any other weight on your lap. This works best if you have a partner do that. And slowly lower your body by bending at the elbows until you lower yourself far enough to where there's an angle that is slightly less than 90 degrees between the upper arm and the forearm. Then, simply push yourself back to the starting position while exhaling. Hear the next trouble spot on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Best Exercises for Your Body's Seven Trouble Spots by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. When I first got into weightlifting way back when, I would always focus on these concentration exercises. I would always focus on building those biceps. I felt like I had really small biceps. I felt like my shoulders were tiny, so I would just do shoulder exercises. Usually these exercises weren't nice compound movements. They were really strict and isolated, and sure enough, after a while, I got frustrated. What I like about Ben's recommendations here is that he's using these large muscle groups and a lot of compound movements, which in my experience, and when we look at the data, really helps tone and build that muscle. 
I used to be really scared of deadlifts, but once I had someone show me how to correctly do it, I'm totally in love with them now, and I've seen such better results. Yes, this is anecdotal evidence, but again, we know from research that these type of heavy lifts, compound movements, although they can be dangerous if you're not doing them correctly, can help to build that muscle. Now, one more time, if you wanna be entered to win books from us, we're doing the next giveaway really soon. The Minimalists actually donated 60 books to us, so we'll have plenty of books to give away to our mailing list. Come by oldpodcast.com and join the newsletter sooner than later. It's totally free. You'll hear from us once a week with some life tips, quotes, and updates, and it's a great way to show that you like what you hear. So a big thank you to The Minimalists and a big thank you to you all for signing up for the newsletter. We promise we won't bug you. That's it for Monday's episode. Again, a very happy President's Day to those of you in the US. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for sharing this show with a friend or family member. And I'll finish this post tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.